Okay, so we are in here with the one and only a Chicago legend right now, D Gaines. How you doing, my man? I'm amazing, bro. How about yourself? I'm good, man. I'm good. It's I can't lie to you, man. It's been a hectic couple days. There's been a there's been a lot going on for me, man. So it's been uh there's been a lot, but we're gonna we're gonna get into all of that, man. But um so yeah, man, are you are you well? Are you busy? What's going on in your world right now? And I'm well and busy. I make myself busy. Good to hear. You know, for the most part. Mm. So, uh, you know, a, a lot of people already already know who you are. You're a legendary figure when it comes to Chicago culture. You know, Chicago drill music. You were really there. Realistically, bro, like, without you, bro, we, we might not even have drill music. Like, you captured some of the most influential and important Chicago drill music videos from the very, very start. So I'm excited. Yeah. To, I'm excited to catch up with you just about, like, everything that went down over the last goddamn like 10 12 years of chicago culture so can you take me right back to the start man when when you first got started man like how did you how did you get started in this videography field and like you know what i'm saying I, i'm guessing you're from chicago but like you mm -hmm. you probably seen everything come from nothing to where it is now man so like take me back to yeah. the start man how, how you get started in this thing um so really I was really known for doing music first. Mm. So um, I'll just start like from around, like maybe like, all right, I, I know where to start. So I started making beats probably when I was like 15. Uh, first time making beats, I used like Music Generator on a, uh, the PlayStation 2. So that's initially like getting my feet wet, ever doing anything. And I, well, before that, I used to um, like I used to make my own album covers. Before I ever had a beat, before I, I actually had one, I'll show you. Got it on my wall. Ugh. This is one of the first album covers I ever made. Damn, crazy! So, what I what year would that have been, man? What what year would that have been? How long ago? Bro, I made this in like two thousand three. Damn, we're talking 20 years. That's crazy. Yeah, I made this. This is literally the exact print. I, I need to frame it so I don't lose it. It's just a reminder of like, like, well, like it doesn't even say D Games. It has my first name on it. Damn. Like before I was even D Games. So I already knew this. I wanted to be a rapper originally. So that was like the plan. Like, um, and I'm a rap. So, uh, yeah, after that, I ended up meeting. This guy who lived a few houses down. And I remember when I around the time when I first met him, like one of the first conversations, he was like, I'm gonna be the next Kanye. But in my head, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna be the next Kanye. <laughs> so so I, I challenged, I'm like, Well, how you gonna be Kanye? You ain't got no beats. And he was like, oh, I make my own beats. I'm like, wait, well, now I'm intrigued. How you do that? I use this thing called FL Studios. And he introduced me to FL Studios, and after that, I was just like going to his crib every day, making beats, burning CDs, just going and just like, damn, I'm a, I'm a producer now. So, um, so that yeah, I was just like producing and stuff like that. Like, um, I would say like a few years later, that's when I probably made like my first song, like maybe like 2007, 2000. Yeah, like 2007 is when I made my, my actual first song, and that was my first time uh, making a music video was with my uncle. He was on the song with me. He, he's younger than me. Uh, so I, I, I filmed this part and, like, edited it on the phone. It was, like, on the camera phone. So that was, like, my first time ever doing a music video. It just came naturally because I watched music videos so much, and I used to have a notebook. I used to write down all my favorite directors and write down... Uh, the videos that they shot when they come on, I'm waiting for the credit. So I just was just always into it, not even knowing like this was something I would actually end up doing. You know, I wanted to rap. That was it, producing rap. You know, so um, when I was probably like around 18, I uh I started working with this group called Shot City Committee. That was the first time ever letting anybody rap on my beats, anything. I got introduced to him by a neighbor, which my uncle, shout out Danny Black the Kid. 
he pushed me because I never wanted to play anybody my beats. I used to like make them strictly for myself and I play them for family. And he pushed me to let the uh, the neighbor hear the beats. And once I played them for him, he, he was like, you gotta meet my homie. So they was like the first artists to ever rap on my beats. And the songs that they did are still on my YouTube. They like the first upload. So you could go back and see it. Um, so after them, my uncle, he uh, he went to Robeson. So he went to school with Lil Dirk and Famous Dex and all them. So he's like, let me take the CDs to school. So started taking my beats to school and he would come home like, man, everybody want to work with you. So he introduced me to this one group uh, called One Love. I started producing for them. And at that time I opened up like my own like studio in house. So I used to have like a lot of artists coming in and I was just engineer for them. So I was making a name for myself just off of producing and engineering. So uh, One Love, they ended up introducing me to their cousin, Bougie. And Bougie was like really ahead of his time. Like everything I felt like ended up becoming popular like years later. And this is still like 2008. So everything that ended up becoming popular, I feel like he was already ahead of that curve. So. We started working and he actually introduced me to Lil Dirk in 2009. So he brought Lil Dirk to my house. It was, Dirk was probably like 15, 16. Wow. So yeah, so that that's why I was taking the story. It's like, it's mm. literally like building blocks. Like it happened like a movie. He introduced me to Dirk. Um, me and Dirk, we all recorded. Dirk ended up staying over my house. We, yeah, we got the shit done. Um, so then, it, it kind of moves into the buck 20 territory and how mm -hmm. that started. So those are F dot and chopper are my biological brothers. We have the same father, but I didn't grow up with them. So I didn't meet my biological father until I was 13 and we didn't start a relationship until I was 20. So, uh, that's when I was introduced to F dot chopper was like incarcerated. When, when I met F dot, we started a line of communication. So throughout all this other stuff that was going on with like me and getting introduced and working with Bougie and meeting Dirt, I had just met my brother too. So um, once Chopper got out of jail, um, he came to me. Well, let me back up a little bit because I said when while I was working with Bougie, that's when I did like one of my first like official videos. We never finished the video, but when I did the trailer. That's why I feel like put the battery in Buck 20 back, like F dot. Once I put up the snippet for the video, they came like, hey, we need we need to work with you. You do everything. You know, I was doing everybody's album covers. I'm doing photography. I'm doing it all, you know. So he came to me and he was like, hey, I got this group I want to start called Buck 20. Uh, and we want you to, you know, help us put it together. So at that time, it was him, Chopper the Goon, and Jay Chris. Uh, billionaire wasn't in the group yet. So this is like early 2009 still. Um, so yeah, they came over. We ended up recording like the first mixtape and we ended up shooting a music video for I Really Live That. You know, so that was like my introduction to, cause like even though I'm from, um, like I'm from the hood, born and raised. I never was a suburban guy, but I was like the hood nerd. So doing a music video thing introduced me into a lot of things I wasn't used to, like being in the streets and everything. So I really lived, that was like kind of like a window into a, like stuff I'd never seen before, even though it was mine. I was just like, oh, okay, it was enticing. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, we did that. And well, actually, I don't think we had, I think maybe um, Billionaire came in as we were doing it, I can't really remember. It's kind of fuzzy, but at some point, because billionaires on I really live. So at some point, he brought billionaire in and was like, "Yeah, he's a part of the group too." Then we filmed I really live that, and yeah, we just we just kept working uh, consistently. Like when me and Buck Twenty started, it was like kind of reality of like man this we can actually do this you know what i mean because the feedback we would get just from the neighborhood and like on the internet and facebook it was just like oh yeah 
we the shit. You know what I'm saying? So I remember we did I Really Live That. We did a couple other videos. And when we shot the music video for We Ain't Even Mad, that's when I felt things start to shift a little bit where it's like now more and more people are reaching out to me wanting to um, work. And then we did Never Talk to Feds. It was actually when I got my first camera, like my first official camera. I think Never Talk to Feds was the first music video I shot with it. Um, and then after I did that, I remember um, I had linked back up with One Love the guys who actually introduced me to Bougie and you know, Bougie, Bougie introduced me to Dirt and they wanted to shoot a, a video and they had a song with Young Chop on it. So this is how I got introduced to Young Chop. They picked me up and we go to a party because the song was called Party. I have the snippet. That's on my channel, you know, because we, we never finished it. Um, and I remember meeting Young Chop that night. Young Chop was probably like 16. He was like, oh, I know who you are. You're D-Games. You know what I'm saying? So... That part, that night was monumental because when we get to the party, Bougie was there. I hadn't seen him in a while, and Lil Durk was at the party. So when Lil and I hadn't seen Lil Durk in like a year or two, so Lil Durk seen me and he was like, "Man, I want to work. I want to, I want to um, get together and do some stuff." I'm like, "All right, let's do it." We lead a party. A few days later, Durk hits me up on um, on Instagram, no, on Facebook. Instagram wasn't in yet. Hits me up on Facebook. He's like. Man, I want to work. How much you gonna charge me? I'm like, and give me two hundred fifty dollars. He's like, all right. Then I hit him back up. I'm like, you know what? Let's just do it. Let's let's fuck the money. I believe in you. Let's work. And uh, yeah, we ended up shooting sneak dissing. And the day I shot sneak dissing for him, I played him the I'm a hitter beat. And yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you want me to keep going or what, but yeah, it's no, just, I'm bro. It's, it's super it's interesting, just... man. I feel like uh, let me let me just let me ask for a few details because like it's it's yeah. it's so much history and like you know what I'm saying you you really were there from the very start. I thought it was really interesting when you said like when you were getting started rapping yourself, you were kind of like you know what I'm saying you, the people around you like everyone was trying to be like the next Kanye because this is like before yeah. Drill, you know, before Dirk, before Keith, like back then in the city. Was 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 Kanye the guy everyone was trying to be at that point? And before him, I don't know who who would it have been like. I don't know, like Twister or something. Like who was everyone trying nah. to be? Like you know, what I'm saying because now everyone wants to be Keith and like Von Bum J. My brother, now my brother used to always F dot. He always talking about Bum J being his influence. I yeah. feel like for me, Kanye was somebody. Whereas though me not being a street person and me not wanting that persona, he was somebody for me to be like, wait, so I can be myself and do this. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but I feel like from the people I know, uh, I feel like a lot of them looked up to like Bump J. You know what I mean? Like definitely my brother. He was actually F Dot is in the old like he's in an old Bump J music video. Like Bump J's first music video, F Dot is in it. Like as a teenager. Oh, so damn, that's, that's how crazy. The that's how crazy all this shit is, bro. Like, even before, like, with 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 everything popped off with Buck Twenty, I remember going around, being around LEP. Like, that was like my first time meeting Pac Man. They like M MTV was out there with LEP, and we went to like a LEP video shoot they had with, like Gucci Man. So we were already like getting in it a bit. You know what I mean? Like before we even started getting our role going, like. We just start seeing things that was just like motivating. Like we need this. We gotta. We gotta get to this level. You know. That's super interesting, man. Because it's like something that I've I've talked about before in certain videos. It's like Chief Keith was kind of the first guy to really make drill popular. But from everything mm -hmm. that I've read about the kind of history, like Pac Man was like the first guy to actually do like drill and say the music was drill. Um, yeah. And it was all very inspired back then by more people like Gucci and Walker and like Atlanta rappers. So like, was there like a big transition in the city where it was kind of like, you know what I'm saying? It seems like that early 2008, 9, 10, all the Chicago rappers were trying to be like Gucci Mane and like OJ. Yeah. And, and, like, and Walker. And Walker. And like, did that, was there like a certain moment or did that happen like, you know, between like 04 and like 08? Like, did that happen slowly or did that, everyone just wake up one day trying to be Gucci in the city? Man, I don't know because I wasn't really, it took me a while to, to um, get into Gucci man and stuff. So I didn't really, I remember when I actually became 
like start even paying attention. I, I, I honestly used to think Gucci was horrible. Yeah. <laughs> but my uncle, he used to have a um a alarm on his phone. I remember, and it was Slumber Party Gucci. Man, I used to get so irritated. It was come on like five, six in the morning. <laughs> and then one day, I'm like, let me go check out because it plays so much. So I listened to it, and I'm just like. And I ended up sampling and making a song, and I became a Gucci. So I would, I would, that was probably like, I would say, oh, nine. Mm. If, I, if I had to say, I would say the ship was like, oh, now when Gucci was dropping like the bird prints and stuff like that, I would say that's when people started like getting into the Gucci stuff. Cause I know for sure my brother and them was heavily influenced by Waka, but mm. also a lot that people don't talk about, which, I'll take credit. I feel like I manifested it. Mm. Is Lil B. Mm. Lil B played it. He was influenced. And I feel like he don't get enough credit to where, though, he was actually the first bigger artist to reach out. He got on Bang with Chief Keith. And he actually influenced me to build my channel the way I built it because of, of his consistency and how I felt like he did visuals yeah. anyway. He just got it done. And yeah. so I seen that and was like, I need to do it this way. You know what I mean? I feel and like Lil too. B, Lil B is so influential, man. Lil B never gets the credit he deserves for like yeah, birthing yeah. so many and just like you say, just getting shit done. Like that guy was just a music making machine. And like mm -hmm. the thing with Lil B, like I've always been a huge Lil B fan, and it's like his music is like realistically, it's kind of hit and miss. But at the same time, he puts out so much good music that there's so many gems in there. You just got to find the those Lil yeah. B hits. You know what I'm saying? And he definitely influenced a lot of people. And that's super interesting that you would say that. Um, I feel like he don't get credit because people don't take him as serious and the gangster yeah. stuff is more popular. To t you know what I'm saying? Lil B was on some whole other type shit. So it's, I feel like it's more I feel like it's more for the look to give all those other guys credit and not give him credit. You know what I mean? I but Lil B definitely had an influence. Especially when it's kind of like, you know, kind of gangster music and like Lil yeah. B, he ain't really a gangster. He makes music that can kind of it, it, it's that sort of vibe it's that same vibe but at the same time Lil B's not really a gangster like a lot of the stuff he says is about positivity and like Soldier, like you say Soldier Boy is a great example because it's like he really was almost like I feel like Soldier Boy was kind of like that guy obviously Gucci and Walker were like really controlling as far as like street and trap music but like Soldier yeah. was kind of doing that Atlanta sound for like the mainstream so I imagine like Soldier probably influenced a lot of people too in that period right like yeah. kind of all these artists but, um, That's what the YouTube thing. I actually mm. found out which camera to get from watching when I was watching Soldier Boy YouTube channel. I'm like, man, what camera do Soldier Boy mm. use? That's how I ended up getting my first camera. I was like, I don't remember how I found out. I was like, use the T1i, mm. and that's how I ended up getting my first camera from watching their YouTube. Well, that's yeah. the thing. So, like you say, Lil B and Soldier Boy. It was like when Soldier Boy first blew up, like. Crank that. It was all this DIY stuff. Like you said, Fruity Loops. Like yeah. he was making all his beats himself on Fruity Loops, filming shit himself. And he just, he, he like made millions just off of, out of his bedroom. You know what I'm saying? He was like 15, yeah. 16 when that was going on. So that's super interesting how that inspiration sort of spread so far. So you mentioned Pac Man. Like I say, like Pac Man's somebody that a lot of people have kind of credited for being like the real, the first guy to do like drill or to like coin the phrase drill. Like, what was your experiences with him and like a lot of people say like he doesn't really get the credit he deserves for kind of like really sort of pioneering this genre that became so big so like obviously i know he he passed away but like what's what's your experience with pac-man honestly I, don't, I only met him like once or twice and i don't think we like ever officially met i just was always see him with lep like when we would get calls like oh yeah lep is doing this show up and pac-man would be there so that was it was just like passing by. I never, um, I don't even know if I knew he was a rapper until like after he passed. And when I started getting like in tune with King Louie and stuff, that's how I was introduced mm -hmm. to the phrase drill and all that stuff was through Louie. And mm -hmm. through Louie that I seen the Pac-Man influence, mm -hmm. you know? Okay. So, so take me back to, to your experience working with Dirk. You said Dirk was coming around staying over your house and obviously you know what I'm yeah. saying? that that real breakout song that really put him on the map for a lot of people was l's anthem which was yeah, well before that in major. The city, it was it was i'm a hitter mm. and i produced it i recorded it and um yeah so i, I played him the beat and he answered it was the first beat i played him and he wanted that and i tried to play him other beats he was like nah go back to that you know 
Um, and I ended up, I don't remember if the first session he ended up coming to me or I took my studio equipment to his place and I, and I, uh, we recorded the first verse and, um, the second verse, I was actually at Billionaire's Black, Billionaire Black's crib recording for him and I shot a music video for him. Then Dirk hit me and was like, Hey, I want to finish. I'm a header. So Billionaire Black actually dropped me off to the gas station to Dirk. Because I, I didn't know about everything that was going on. You know, Billy never stayed in on like St. Lawrence over there type stuff. So I, I told Dirk where I was. He was like, oh, no, I can't come over there. And I literally didn't understand. I'm like, how come he can't? Because I'm not from yeah. the street. So, and I didn't know what was going on. So I'm like, so I asked Billy and I'm like, yeah, you'll drop me off to Dirk. So we all met up. I went to Dirk's place. We, um, we recorded the second verse for the song. And then Dirk was like, yeah, let's shoot a snippet. And I dropped both videos. I dropped Billy and video and Dirk video the next day. The I'm a hitter. And I think the Billy and song was called The Intro. So, yeah, that was kind of like once we did I'm a hitter, that's when Dirk really started building steam. You know what I mean? Um, And I'm a hitter is what made King Louie reach out to me. So it's like everything was like a domino effect. Like once I did I'm a hitter, I actually, like a couple months before that, I was at some uh, guy's house in like Indiana and they played me King Louie for the first time. And I was like, damn, I ended up going downloading all his mixtape, playing the shit on repeat. And I just was like, yeah, he, he gonna hit me up soon, like real soon. So after I did I'm a Hitter, like a few weeks or a month later, Bobby Drake reached out to me on Facebook and was like, yeah, King Louie wanna work with you. I'm like, yeah, I knew it. I knew it was coming. And then I uh, shot Louis' first video after that. Like Dirk was in the first Louis video. Like we uh, we met up with like Chief Wook, shot by Barney Crib, and then we went and shot uh, the King Louis video. I, I think it was called Going Dumb. And when he he in the video, you can see him playing I'm a hitter on a projector. And I was like, this is my time to tell him. Like I do a little bit more than visuals. So he's playing and he's like, man, this shit is this shit is crazy. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I made the beat. But like, what else you do? Mm. You know what I mean? And he's like, send me some beats. So I sent him a beat pack, and in the beat pack was the Money Dance beat. So that's how I even ended up producing Money Dance with King Louie. So like I said, it was just like chain reaction, like this person and this person. It was just like that's how it happened, you know. So what was the sense like, you know what I'm saying? You're mentioning a lot of big names that like went on to become super legendary in the scene. But like at yeah. the time, could you like really appreciate what was going on? Like, did you, did, you know, did you look at someone like Dirk and think like this guy could be a star or were, were you not really at that, at that point in time before Drill blew up? Were you not really, you guys probably, probably weren't even thinking on that level. Like what, what was the sense? Man, I knew it. I knew he could be a star. Like uh, that's why even when he DM, that's why I brought up when he DM me and I took the chance because I already thought he had the look. I thought he had the just the appeal. So that's why I was like, you know what? I ain't gonna start him. I just want to work because I feel like we can do something dope. So I already knew it. And Louis kind of already had a buzz. So to be honest, when I first worked with Louis, it felt like I was already working with a celebrity. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So. You know, like once those numbers started coming in, and, and to be honest, I still wasn't even impressed. Like once we started building the numbers, I, I don't think it it actually ever really hit me. You know what I mean? But at the same time, I knew. Like I I, I remember I was eighteen, and I told myself like I'm gonna do something big. You know, like literally, I remember sitting on my bed and saying it to myself. So everything was happening was just a part of the plan. You know what I mean? sure so tell me tell me about what happened like in between that period where you know you kind of you discovered and, and they kind of discovered you you know Lil Durk King Louis but like what what was the transition from there up to the point where you met Chief Keef because that was kind of like that seems like the moment when when Keef got on it sort of yeah. changed everything in the city so walk me through like the timeline from from that period where you're kind of shooting those first videos you're making beats you're kind of you're seeing seeing the potential like you say you could tell that you were you were working with future stars and then at what point does Keith kind of enter the frame? Um, so Keith was already reaching out to me, like, with the Buck 20 shit. Like, like soon after I worked with Dirk, 
beef was already like reaching out to me at that and maybe in that time span you know what i mean so and he would hit me up i remember specifically i'm like eli i want to fuck with you i'm like how and he's like shit how you how you work with buck 20 i want the beats i want everything because that's why i was glad that you did put the spotlight on them because i feel like they don't get enough credit on um, everybody who really wanted to work with me up early on wanted to work with me because of the work we were doing together they looked up to them they wanted features from them you know what i mean so uh yeah he was already reaching out to me but at that time like it was a lot of people reaching out so i didn't really take it serious until i remember seeing in his bitch video with Lil, it was Lil reese featuring keith and when i seen that video i was like hey ain't this the little guy man he, i'm like oh he he on or something you know so that's like it gave me something to visualize and see him and hear him and i was like oh yeah i'll take a chance and i ended up going to the studio with dirk the dj ken studio and keith was outside and i just like chopped it up with him and was like man i, I want to work with you you know let's do it and shit like a week later i caught the bus to go shoot bang oh. <laughs> like that's how that that happened like he reached out to me he ended up dropping that video. I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll work with him. Ran into him maybe a couple weeks later, and we shot the video next, like the following week. A month later, Bang had 400,000 views. Damn. I, I get the sense, man, that like this, in, this period of time in Chicago, it seemed like everything was just happening crazy fast. Like you just meeting yeah. this person, the next minute you meet that person, the next minute you're doing a, a video the week after, and then the next week it's got 400,000 views. Like... <laughs> From your perspective, like life must have just been crazy uh, in this period, right? Yeah, to be honest, I had so much. So I don't share it a lot, but in, in the end of 2010, I ended up, uh, my house ended up getting shot up. Um. So I had the in house studio, and it was like the artist I was working with, he had like issues in the area and he came over with his homies to record and it was like so much ironic shit happened that that day in that moment you know like basically i had my uh the computer set up in the room and my mom was using the computer because she was looking for us a new place to move like she's just like i'm ready to move and so we couldn't even get in the studio and record so we all on the couch and shit uh and she she's trying to move she don't want to yeah. live there <laughs> <laughs> so we on it we all on the couch and we um we playing grand theft auto 4. so like when the guns were actually yeah. started going off my mom just thought it was the tv until she heard like all the so basically uh we playing the game and i remember it was it was the, the, everybody was he like three of his homies was in the living room i'm there sitting on the couch chop is on the side of me sleep f dot is right here my little cousin I got to remember the whole fucking scene and I was just remember him and like a cloud of dust came from the window and my first man was like, bro, who the fuck just threw a rock through the window, you know? And then I remember at that moment, I didn't realize it, but F dot was the first person to get shot. He got shot in the shoulder. Yeah. So after the first shot, it was, like, bah, 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 bah. It was like call of duty, we crawling on the ground. And one of the other guys ended up getting hit in the arm. And bro, it was it was a scary moment. I'm not gonna lie. Like I had like noodle legs. So we ended up moving out like the same night because yeah. we didn't know where it came from. It was just like some crazy shit. Um so I feel like that added to me starting to have like anxiety. So I I started smoking and then one day I was smoking. And I don't know what happened, but it just like it flipped the switch in my head and I was just like fucked for like a, a throughout the whole process of me shooting all those drill videos in 2011, I was going home and having fucking panic attacks. Not that it had anything to do with that, but that's all for my own issues. Mm. Like I remember, to be honest, when I shot Dirk's first video, I remember it vividly. I was putting it in my memory card and I was having like a silent anxiety attack yeah. without nobody even knowing. So what you asking, like, basically, I felt like I was disassociated with everything that was going on at the time. 
you know, I showed up. That's I, I look back on it like, damn, it's crazy. Like, I got it done with going through crazy mental issues. You know what I mean? I was in and out the hospital for the shit. Like, but I, after I got out the hospital, I went and shot that music video. Yeah. <laughs> You didn't let it stop you, man. You just had to keep yeah. going. It, it sounds like, you know, that must have been a period in your life where shit was going so fast. You had so many opportunities. You're suffering mentally, but at the same time, you still got to go and get it. And you, yeah. like you say, you know, you'd be on set, putting the memory card in the camera, and you just got to firm that shit up and keep going because yeah. you're you're out there in the mix with people, and you, they're relying on you to deliver the video. Like you say, you know, you, you the way you explained it at the start, as you said, maybe you were kind of like, maybe a little bit naive to some of the street shit that was going on around the music. Yeah. And then you're kind of in the mix of it. Next thing you know, your house is getting shot up, bro. That's crazy. Yeah. And then I was everywhere. Like when I was doing the videos, bro, I never had security. Never had a gun on me. I just went and moved with the faithful guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I was, and I was everywhere by myself. Yeah, you know? man. That's, that's crazy. So, you got to the point where you did uh, was it the the bang video for Chief Keef, right? And yeah. Uh, you said that got like what four hundred k in a week, in a month. In a month. And it had, I think, the most I ever had. I mo the most at that point I probably had on a video was maybe three hundred k on a single video, and it was either on like a King Louie or a Lil Dirt video. But when once I did bang, it passed that up in a month. Like, excuse me, it did like a four hundred k in a month. Yeah. Um, so like so after it, that, it sure had to fail. everybody must have wanted a wanted a D Gaines video after that went up, right? I mean, at that time they already was. Yeah. Like it felt like ain't nothing changed for me. To be honest, I wasn't even paying attention. Like I didn't even realize how much it was growing until I, I shot this video afterwards called "Welcome to the Real World" with Sasha Go Hard, and Keith and Fredo came to the video shoot, and. It was like a, a, a older lady walked up to Keith and was like, I know who you are. He's like, sing your song. And I remember Keith, Keith like acapella singing, bang. And, I, and I, I'm like, but it was, that was like the first moment. I'm like, hold on, his shit popping like that. I wasn't even paying attention. Like, to be honest, like, I had so much shit going on, you know? So I didn't even know that shit. I don't even think I knew it had that many views. I'll be real with you. Was was Keith himself like? Was he used to people coming up to him like that, or was that crazy shit for him too? I really don't know. See, the the thing is, I feel like everything happened so quick that I wasn't able to ever f form any type of bond with Keith. You know what I mean? Like, Got it. it just happened all so fast. You know what I'm so I really never knew any Keith personal takes on anything. You feel? Mm. So I really don't know how he felt. But so you said like, you know, that video getting 400K in a month, like you say, you know, you were so busy in the mix doing your thing. That didn't really even register with you. What what was the moment where kind of you, you kind of realized and you were like, damn, this shit's real. Was it like your first million view video? Was it Chief, get, Chief Keith getting his deal? Like what was the moment where you really stood up and you said, damn, like this whole drill um, scene is mainstream? Well, I got a call from Atlantic Records. Hmm. I remember calling, get, I, I think her name was Amanda. I remember she called me. She, she was like, I'm from Atlantic Records. That was the moment. That was 2011, like at the end. That was before we even did like, I don't like and all that. Like, that's when I was like, oh shit, this is serious. You know what I mean? But then away from that, the, the moment where I was like, oh yeah. It was when the little kid hit World Star. When, once Keith got out of jail, like in January, 2012. Uh, and the kid was like, Chief Keith is out of prison. And he was like going crazy. I'm like, oh, shit. It, like, any, none of Keith's videos had hit World Star at that point, but that video did. So I was like, oh, yeah, it, it'll be no time before his videos start getting uploaded. You know what I mean? So that that was the moment. Those two, I was like, yeah, this shit is real. It's about to, it's about to, go, it's about to go up. So I remember, you know, I was always, I, I, you know, I've, I've listened to and followed hip hop my whole life. I kind of was following Keith from, from his early days. And for me, like, I was always a Kanye fan. I started hearing about this guy, Chief Keith. But the moment that, like, was really crazy was when Kanye did the I Don't Like remix with Pusha T. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember who else was on there. Jada Kiss, I think. Or whoever. There was a few people. Kanye, I think maybe Big Short, whoever. Like, Kanye did the whole big I Don't Like remix where he yeah. changed the beat up and like that for me being in england that even that song was huge 
for like English hip hop fans, and that's when it's like I guess shit must have gone global. But like, yeah. you know, what was your perspective on it when it's like this stuff that you was making that really was like for Chicago kind of became music that everyone around the world started enjoying. Like, what was that experience for you when you realized that was happening? Like when he did the remix. Yeah, well, you know that song, like that went on the Billboard charts. That went everywhere. Like that must have been crazy. I didn't like it. I didn't like huh? the remix. A lot of people say no, that. I ain't getting no shout out. I was, mm. I was lit when he said Chief Keith King. I'm like, D <laughs> <laughs> damn, they snake so I, I was like, damn, where my shout out at? But I don't know. I just like the original more. Mm. Like, um, but yeah, no, I think at the time for me. I still wasn't fulfilled. Like mm. I'm jokingly saying that, but that's what was happening with everything. Even throughout when everything was blowing up, I still felt like I was getting like the short end of the stick. Like I, I wasn't getting like credit. I wasn't getting mentioned for real. Like when the artists would do interviews, like, so I was like, it was all bittersweet for me. You know what I'm saying? I was still broke. You know? Um, so I don't know. I wasn't a, enjoying it as much you know i was making a little money and the the notoriety was paying off i started getting a bunch of females and stuff like that but i was watching all them take trips to la and do this and do all this and that so for me i was just like like damn what am i doing wrong you know so yeah it was it was like bittersweet i feel you man yeah it feels like uh you know i'm saying a lot of uh I don't know. It's it's difficult when like you know that that situation with like Kanye kind of taking the song and he kind of turned it into his own. You know, I I don't know whether it's true, but I remember hearing a rumor that like even Chief Keef wasn't really feeling the remix like that. Um, yeah, he, obviously. I ain't gonna lie. He told me he didn't. I asked him. He, I like you like that. He was like, because <laughs> it's his thing. You know what I'm saying? Like they t yeah. they changed the changed the beat. They switched it all up. Yeah, Chop Kanye's was on there. He got on yeah. the radio so spazzing like Chop was pissed off. He's he like, I didn't tell him to change the beat. Honestly, I like the original one. For, like, either way, like, I like, and I think it's a debate. Like, I used to hear everybody like, well, Kanye put Keith on. I think that, that shit was going up regardless. That's why Kanye got on it. You know, I, I definitely appreciate, you know what I'm saying? I feel like if even if Keith probably don't enjoy it, he might appreciate it because that shit opened up doors for him. But I think he was up regardless, you know? Mm -hmm. So like walk me through uh you know what what was your what was your situation after that like after Chief Keith kind of took off and then you know he kind of over the years that went on he kind of left Chicago behind to a certain degree what what were the things that you were working on like what was cuz the even though Chief Keith left the whole city brought so much attention to Chicago and Chicago music and it seems like between like 2012 and like 2016 damn near Chicago became like the city for like rappers to be kind of doing their thing obviously dirt came up a lot in those years like what was your experience yeah. in the years that followed like once drill became this huge thing what was your experience like what were you doing it was terrible <laughs> <laughs> oh so um basically it wasn't it wasn't fun bro i ended up getting having terrible management all those guys had kind of like stopped talking to me so I really struggled in those years afterwards. You know what I mean? Like, basically, I feel like I once, like, I could take it back a little bit. Like, like my first manager I had was Dro. I introduced him to Keith. That's how Keith got, like, his first manager. And, uh, but me and Dirk was so close that he ended up getting managed by Lyrical Eyes Management. And uh, I'm like, man, since we like brothers, I want to go under the same management as you. You know what I mean? So I went and left uh, Dro and went to Lyrical Eyes Management. And then after that, Dirt Cat ended up going to L.A. to, I guess, meet with Def Jam or something like that. And I remember he came back and I was like, damn, bro, like, why you ain't take me with you? Like, I've never been to LA. And he was like, oh, um, I'm going to take you with you. I'm going to take you with me next time. And he went to LA a, a couple days later and, and left me again. Damn. So at that point, I, I I just started, I'm like, 
So that was that. And then so I was left with lyrical. And then to be honest, in that situation, I felt like I was kind of manipulated into signing a contract with her. You know what I mean? So I ended up being in that management and she was management, she was managing AZ production at the time too, and like a bunch of other artists, but he's like the most like prominent out of uh, other people. He was managing Zay and then uh basically I found out they were dating. Damn. And then they told me themselves and it just became this whole big issue. But I remember um Spenzo telling me like, uh man, you might want to leave from under that management because it's a conflict of interest if she's dating the other videographer. So that turned into a, a whole thing while I ended up stopped talking to her and I got in another terrible management out after that. But you know, to rewind it a little bit at the time, like I hadn't heard from Keith, like after I shot the everyday video, Keith went on, he went to LA, didn't hear from him. That wasn't hearing from Louie at this, at this point, And like in the middle of 2012, I wasn't hearing from any of the artists that like I, I came up with that was known. So uh, I remember uh, they were all, they were all beefing with this artist, King Samson. So basically, I, I guess Louis and Samson, Samson had history. And once Dirk started collaborating with Louis, Samson dissed Dirk. And then I guess Samson dissed Dirk, um, Keith because he felt like Keith took the bang shit from him. So I couldn't, I couldn't fuck with Samson. I'm like, I can't work with Samson because he's beefing with all the main artists I'm dealing with. Yeah. And in that time span where I felt like none of them were talking to me and none of them were mentioning me, I was just like so pissed off, like, damn, like why am I being loyal to these guys? And once uh once it came a opportunity a opportunity for me to work with Samson, I took it. And uh and I, I did it like I was being a little vindictive. I was like, shit, if y'all don't want to fuck with me, I'm gonna just work with the with the, the opposing guy. And I feel like after that, that ruined our chemistry. You know what I'm saying? Like it kind of was like, but I, I feel like sometimes I'll be feeling like, damn, like it's like y'all wanted the reason not to fuck with me anyway. Like in that moment, even though like me and Louie worked afterwards, it's just in that moment, that's how I felt like, like, damn, like y'all already wasn't talking to me. But then we, I ended up working with Keith after that and working with Louis. But I bring up that story because that's, I feel like that gave him ammo to feel like, all right, we're going to go fuck with Zay. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and then, like, once I left Lyrical Eyes, me and Zay, like, stopped seeing eye to eye. Like, I feel like he got pissed off at me because of how I just dumped the Lyrical situation. So going into 2012 was really, like, like no, I feel like everybody hated me. Everybody want nobody. So and then I ended up in a terrible fucking management after lyrical, and I already had those people not talking to me, and my manager just start booking me terrible. Like some videos, I wouldn't even I show up to not even hearing the music, and then I hear it and be like, bro, like what are you booking me? You know what I'm saying? And it was, bro, it was just horrible, bro. Like, I was making money and, because my channel was known for, like, all right, when we come to D-Games channel, we, we just the new up-and-coming artists, and at that point, it just became about money. Whoever he could get money from that wanted to work from me, then he was stealing hella money from me. I found out, like, all type of wild shit. So for, for two years, it was just like, um, like, from... 20 end of 2012 to 2015 it was just really bad bro i'm not gonna lie to you that but it, but i don't regret any of it because all of that compiled is what pushed me to do what i actually wanted to do and that was my music you know what i mean so once once i feel like i'm like man don't nobody care about my videos no more i'm just going to do my music you know what i'm saying so that's the best thing that came out of any of it because i prefer to do that anyway you know what i mean 
Yeah, so, I get you, man. And and it was some good times in between, but for the most part, that shit was bad, bro. You know, it's, it's difficult to hear like how you kind of, uh, you know, what I'm saying like you know messing with the messing with the wrong people, but like you know, what I'm saying certain people don't want you to work with other people, and it seems like that must be yeah. a really difficult thing to navigate in Chicago. You know, like you said, like you working with Dirk. You said, I'm going to go meet this person on 63rd. And he's like, I can't go over there. And it's like, if you're naive yeah. to all of that stuff that's going on, you know, it seems like, uh, unfortunately, like the politics and the streets in Chicago really got in the way of a lot of people like making money and having success and stuff like that. You know, do you feel like, uh, do you feel like that's the case that like the streets really got in the way of certain people getting on, you know, in a more professional yeah. kind of way? But like everything that made, that made it popular is the same thing that brought it down, you know? Mm -hmm. Just the street politics. Um, and yeah, like, and then I never had a conversation with any of them, like, personally, you know? And, and I feel like I was still young. Like, I'm in a way different mindset. So I never had a conversation with any of them. I just knew they did feel a way, you feel? Because each one of them brought it up. Like, Dirk didn't, like, after the first time I seen Dirk after I did the King Cypher video, he didn't even speak to me. Like, one of his homies ended up telling me, like, yeah, they, they pissed off at you. But I remember just feeling like, damn, bro, like, y'all left me. Like, how could y'all even feel away? You know what I mean? Like, at that point, too, the people don't know this part, I never even got paid for any of that. Like, I never got a dime from Keith. I never charged him anything for any of those videos. Love Sosa was the only one I got paid for, and that was the label. I never charged Dirt. And when I did, it was bare minimum, a hundred dollars and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, I never charged Louis. I never was charging like the main guys that I was working with and from the beginning. So that added to me feeling pissed off. Like, damn, I feel like I'm getting nothing out of it. Like, and then even with YouTube, I didn't start making money off YouTube until 2013. You know what I mean? So you can see why I was like, yeah, fuck it. Piss, I'm broke. I'm not getting mentioned. And it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> so I didn't care about the street politics at that point. Like, I knew they was gonna be pissed off, but I just really didn't didn't, didn't care at that point because I'm like, man, I just felt like nobody cared about me anyway. You know. So, uh, how do you feel about how kind of how kind of the city has kind of evolved since then? Because it's almost like that 2012 to 2015 period was like a real boom for Chicago drill and rap. And it kind of, I, I feels like over the years, at a certain point, it got very corporate. You know, it sounds like there was a lot of shady deals, shady managers, people really coming and trying to take advantage of the city and, and what was going on there. But it seems like in the sort of 10 years since that's happened, you know, maybe people like sounds like yourself, you know, it sounds like you kind of got wise to some of the shady tactics and the industry type shit that was going on. Um, you know what I'm saying? How, how have things kind of evolved since then? Do you feel like things have kind of gotten a little bit more uh i don't know it's like seems like just people were really trying to take advantage of what was going on in the city uh you know, I, I don't know whether now whether it's a little bit more genuine or people have kind of woken up to that kind of thing but like you know what, what what's the state of like the music scene in chicago, chicago like now as it stands or in the last like maybe the last like three four years honestly i don't know <laughs> yeah i stay i stay far away from it i'm not gonna lie to you bro like, I moved to Georgia. Before Georgia, I was, like, in L.A. a lot. And even when I was in the city, I just felt like I dealt with so much. Like, even in the moments where I would, like, get back out in the city and I'm like, I want to do it all over again. I'm going to get back out. You know what? I'm not going to charge artists. I just want to work. I'm going to put everything back where it needs to be. I'll just get so drained. Or you will see, I would see, like, small, um, Eyes of like, man, I'm gonna get done the same way. I, I'm gonna just always get the short end of the stick. So, I just got to a point where I just like, man, I just really rather focus on myself. You know what I mean? Like, I have, I get way more excited putting out my own music. I don't have to deal with anybody. I make all my own beats. I record it. Mm. I shoot my own videos. The last couple videos I released, I shot them in my bedroom with the green screen. So. I just got to a point where I just tuned all the way out. I could, I really couldn't tell you. You probably know more about what's going on in Chicago than I do. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know too much about what's going on, man. People be on my case <laughs> about about what's going on in Chicago, man. I, I know too much. I need to I need to find a way of, of forgetting some of this shit because 
people be yeah. on my case man but um obviously the reason that we got in touch to begin with uh obviously you know i kind of mentioned and, and really tried to pay homage to you and your brothers yeah. as far as like the role that you guys played in the early days of kind of the chicago drill scene um obviously you saw the video because you reached out and we ended up having no, i actually i didn't even see it i didn't even you didn't know see it you... damn nah so i didn't even know if you knew who i was when i dm'd you like genuinely i just remember my brother calling me that night and he he got a call and was and told me about the documentary so i just was pissed off because he he's genuinely staying out the way you know what i mean he focused on his kids and then he's not even from over there didn't have anything to do with anything so i just didn't want his name to like even get mentioned with it like i didn't even know the context of anything that's why when you told me and sent me the video i was like oh okay and we chopped it up but mm. i didn't even i hadn't even seen it because they were telling me like it was on patreon yeah and stuff like that I, honestly i didn't even expect you to take it out either so i i appreciate that um what, yeah, what was that was, what was that phone call like man it sounds like he was mad yeah he was just like oh he like bro like because this was the second it was another youtube video that had put his name in it too so he already was like he was just like pissed off he's like man i don't want to have to deal with that shit. i want to be able to keep my head down and, and live because he came a long way and got real far away from all that stuff you know what i mean so he just don't want to be mentioned especially something that he literally had nothing to do with you know what i'm saying like so yeah he was more like disappointed upset he wasn't like spazzing <laughs> but he was yeah. like he was pissed off for it, sure it's, it's one of those things man because like with what i do you know my whole approach is to try and like find out everything about a topic you know what i'm saying everything anyone's ever said you know what i'm saying even if there's a theory that's bullshit you know i try and take a theory and say look that ain't people are saying this happened but that ain't what happened yeah. you know, there's a few things in that video where i kind of say look people were saying that this guy did this but actually if you look a bit deeper he didn't do that yeah. but you know what i'm saying i i know uh not you know what i'm saying not everybody uh like being part of the conversation full stop you know what i'm saying but um you know what i'm saying i was glad that that you reached out because like i say you're somebody that's that really played a major role in kind of forming that scene you know what i'm saying we wouldn't have yeah. a lot of this shit now if it wasn't for you and the the work that you were putting in so i was excited to to have a conversation with you and to just be plugged into what you were doing man so uh you know i was glad yeah. that you reached out and uh you know what i'm saying i was glad that we could we could kind of have this conversation and chop it up no, for sure. It, it worked out for the better. Shout out to Tay, too, man. Like that, That's like uh, one of my bro best friends. You know, I, I appreciate Tay. He, he did like a no, a no jumper interview where like Lil Reese was talking about me. And well, he wasn't talking about me. He was mentioning everybody that had something to do with the shit, but he wouldn't mention me. And Tay brought me up. It was like, what about the gang? And it was like, when I see clips like that, it still like confuses me bro like that's one of the things too where they still don't mention me you feel me and you would think like i feel like without me who knows where y'all would have been at you know what i'm saying and i just be like damn like what's the issue like i don't at besides the king samson shit, and that shit was 10 years ago and then we still worked afterward it's like it's like what's the issue you feel me like I've seen these guys afterwards. I shot video with Lil Dirk to make it back. He he never put it out. He like stopped talking to me afterwards. Uh. Keith, I seen him last year uh, on like we were, I was at the Glow Mansion. Like when that clip went viral with all the explosions, like I was there. My arm was fucking burnt up, and it was just still awkward vibes. And it's just like, you know, I never felt enough to actually have a conversation or even if they would because i've reached out plenty of times over the years and it's just like i don't know i don't know what the issue is like what what's the issue with even mentioning me like i've seen narratives be a pain online like oh it's because you fucked with the ops i met all these people at the same time i met i probably met fvg Doug before i met chief keith you know what i mean so i feel like it wasn't the issue then like why would i stop now like i fucked with everybody I'm probably the only person who got Lil Dirt, Chief Keith, FBG Duck all on like the same channel, you know? And so That's I never crazy. seen, yeah, I never seen like, I never cared about the game shit. I just wanted to work with dope artists. And yeah, I don't know. I just don't know what the issue with me is specifically. Like when I was around FBG Duck and them, I never heard them 
say have, have anything bad to say about them. They didn't talk about them, man. You know what I mean? Like I didn't know it was that serious until like people start passing away and you start hearing all this other stuff. So yeah, I just really I don't I don't have a relationship with any of these people anymore. You know. Well, it, it sounds like you you spent time with and met damn near everybody who was somebody in the scene. I got to ask you this question. I know a lot of people are gonna want want me to ask this. Did, did you ever have any interaction with King Von? Nah, I didn't know him. I met. I've met pretty much everybody except for I didn't I never met King uh King Von, I never met Juice World, I never met uh Famous Dex. I think I, other than that, I, I met everybody. I, I ran into Polo G once in LA. Uh yeah, I think I met everybody literally probably like Kanye. I never met Kanye. You feel me? But I've met everybody else. Even the old guy, Twister, Do or Die, Crucial Conflict. I don't know, Bump J. I shot a video with Bump J. I've actually shot stuff with Twister. I really, I really met, and I really you, worked you ever with. Spend, uh, you ever spend time with like uh, G Herbo or Lil Bibby? Yeah, I shot, I shot um a feature, like two features with Herbo back in the day, and I ran into him at the the Dirt at the United Center last year. I met, I ran into her and Bibby, but any like personal time now, I just met him like the couple times I did work with him i remember like in the beginning dj l he actually called me and tried to get me to help manage them like before they popped off like yeah like he hit me up and i remember having a conversation he wanted me to help manage them I, at that point that's when the whole 2012 stuff was going on so i wasn't really like i mean i never had the confidence to be anybody's manager for real like i had few people ask like dreezy she asked me to be a manager before like she popped off like a hell of people was asking me, man. I'm like, bro, I'm I'm broke. I can't can I, <laughs> I don't even got no experience. I'm terrible at business right now. Like, so I used to be like, I can't manage anybody. I can't even manage my own life right now. So, yeah, at, at that point, like everybody was reaching out to me. So yeah, I don't I don't have any uh any like experiences really with her, but baby, you know what I'm saying. Well, so. listen, man. You know you're you're a real Chicago legend, bro, and it's uh, it's a pleasure to talk with you and and to just like hear hear some of your history. Um, yeah. I think the, the last thing I want to ask you really is just like, what do you want the people to know right now? You know, what I'm saying, what do you want to promote? What are you working on? What's coming up for you? You know, what I'm saying, this is an opportunity for you to kind of just like use my platform, let the people know what you want them to go and check out. Yeah, you gotta check out my YouTube, all my um uh, my latest releases. Uh. I'll just my music. I'm, I'm releasing a new song in a couple of days. I'm gonna continue to put out my music. Uh, I think people will really enjoy it. it you know, it's, it's a lot different from the stuff that I'm known for shooting, but you know, I think y'all will really uh, enjoy it. You know? For real, man. Look, we it's, can't it's great. We, we can't just be doing the same shit as everyone else. We got to keep it original. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We got to keep it moving forward. And uh, you know what I'm saying? I want people to go and check you out, man. So anybody that's watching this, man, go and check out D Gaines' new stuff. It's coming out in a few days. This will probably drop in just in time. You know what I'm saying? For yeah. your new releases. And, uh, bro, I really, really appreciate your time, man. Anytime you ever need anything from me, you know what I'm saying? You're trying to promote anything. You know what I'm saying? Just anything that you need, just let me know, bro, because we're tapped in now. And, and I really appreciate what you did for, for the city and what you did for kind of music history you know what i'm saying a lot of shit that i love we wouldn't have today if it weren't for you man so i, I want to show you that sure. respect shout out to canon shout out to canon dslr hey facts that's what i'm on right now <laughs> right here bro i wouldn't have nothing yeah. if it wasn't for canon bro facts yeah shout out to canon so, yeah i appreciate you bro for real appreciate it too man well we'll catch up soon like i say anytime you need anything hit me up and i uh, appreciate you man it's uh it's a pleasure to interview you for sure man thank you love bro appreciate it take care Peace there we have it people D Gaines interview a real Chicago legend in the building man I really enjoyed chopping it up with him man that was crazy some serious history that was like a goddamn Chicago drill history lesson man damn that was so so fascinating man I hope that everybody enjoyed that if you want to see more interviews from me on the channel make sure you hit that subscribe button man hope you enjoyed it hope you uh hope you're feeling the content man we we really ran it up in 2023 i ain't gonna cap so uh yeah you know what i'm saying that was lit damn big d gains i really enjoyed that conversation um so shout out to d gains 
really, really grateful for him to, uh, to, to give me an hour of his time and hop in here, man. So I appreciate that. And until next time, trap more gang, trap law gang, trap law clips, all the channels, man. I might have to start a fourth channel in this bitch soon. But anyway, thank you. Peace.